what we're doing here is we're working on the concept of relational movement. So one thing moves in relation to another. We're just going to continue to build on examples of this. So what we'll do is a very, very general, uh, large assessment, uh, patient active assessment, and we'll follow that by utilizing a patient active approach or a patient guided approach in order to create the relational motion that we want. So what we're going to do is we'll have you bend to your bend to this side, as best you can. Bend to the other side, best you can. And in a comparative sense, you like to bend that way, and you don't like to bend this way. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to bend this way. Now this isn't absolutely how I would do this in practice because, as you can see, I'm pretty far away from the patient. I don't have good contact with them, but I want to display something to you. So now it's hard for you to see what he's going to do, but we're going to ask him to do it, and you won't see his legs, but you will see his body. So what I want you to do is just take your Take this leg and push it straight down on the table. You see how he starts to torque, let go, okay? Push down, this leg down on the table, okay? So that's this side and let go, okay? And we're gonna have you push this leg down, so over this side and let go. And now we see there's a fair amount of motion when this side is pushed down and this leg's pushed into the table. Push this leg into the table, okay? Now he goes the way we want. Now we get something from both sides, from both directions. What happens is as the leg is pushed into the table, that side is actually going to start to move away from the table. So as the leg goes down, he's actually going to hit it and essentially lift off. What we do is we try both sides in order to see which one's going to give us more of what we want. Okay, so we'll have you go this side and let go, this side and let go, this side and let go, this side and let go this side, and let go, and we just keep walking back and forth. Now we let the patient come on back up, okay, and we'll do our comparative analysis. Now, just to understand that what we're doing is we're, we have the patient in seated position, we take him to bind, we take him to barrier, the direct barrier, and then what we do is hold him in position, and then we have him push his legs into the table, so not only do multiple muscles that will work on the lumbar column engage, right, regardless of which ones, and regardless of how that patient's firing patterns work, what we get is some engagement, and then we also get the pelvis tipping underneath the vertebral column. As the pelvis tips, right, so we hold the vertebral column still, and we tip the pelvis under it, so we get the concept of relational motion. So let me tip this way, because we know that was the good way. Right, so we just got our comparative. And from general memory, this actually looks better than it did previous. I may be incorrect about that, and that's fine. Tip this way. And that's more comfortable. It's not perfect, but he's able to move slightly farther. So with a very, very broad uh, demonstration, what we've shown is that we hold the vertebral column steady, we move the pelvis under the vertebral column by moving the legs into the table, and the patient does receive some benefit from it.